What's up, what's up, everybody? JDLS, how's it going, my friend? Good to see you. JDLS, how's it going, my friend? Good to see you. Sorry, just check checking the sound quality. Your package probably still hasn't arrived, JDLS, is my guess, because you're in Canada, but it might have by now. I should probably check uh, your your uh, tracking number what's going on urban good to see you man welcome welcome got uh, some mail from you urban that i was gonna go through and urban yours got uh mailed yesterday I think yeah, because the uh, it was all the other stuff that went out today, the giveaways that I had done. Not sure he's in Virginia right now. Virginia. Wow, that's wild. Got some other cool stuff from uh, Urban Funkin and Hobby, and then I got another card. From somebody else, but I honestly cannot remember who it's for. I think Hobby sent this card as well. No, he just sent his. So I don't remember who this is from. I had opened it with the intention of going live right right afterwards, and then I ended up having to do something else, so I couldn't go live. But <coughs> anyways, what is it? What is it? Uh, One o'clock Eastern now? Yeah. Today's Wednesday. And uh, they have started the trial to impeach President Trump. That's wild. Hasn't happened uh, in a long time since Clinton. Before that, it was Nixon. So that should be fun, because everybody's going to be talking about that for the rest of the week, which is irritating. I just want to stick on cards. Sports. Baseball talk. Obviously, the hot topic right now, as you guys know, is the Houston Astros. Getting caught for stealing signs. Now, they're technically not caught yet. Uh, one of their pitchers has admitted to it. So, they're in a bit of a bind right now. Yeah, I get all the Canadians here. They're not going to care about American politics anyways, which is good. Yeah, maybe they do. I don't know. There's too too much uh, American politics worldwide. It just... People focus on us too much. A Pikachu rookie card. Sweet, dude. That's what I like to hear. I was hoping Super would show up today, but I don't know if he will. Doesn't matter, I'm just going to go through his cards anyways. Let's jump into the cards. What else do we have going on? So, he sent me these quite a while ago. I took them up to Denver with me and I was going to show you guys and ended up leaving them in my friend's car when we went to the Bronco game. But, I wanted to show these to you. I'm doing good, Enlightened. Welcome, it's good to see you, man. Catching a live stream. I like it. I appreciate it. How are you doing? So we got this uh, Ride On Jungle First Edition Jungle, which is awesome. Really good condition, all of these cards. They've been sleeved since he got them. So uh, then we have a Tauros uh, First Edition Jungle. Uh, a Rhyhorn First Edition Jungle. And you can tell it's a jungle because it's got that little leaf here in the corner. Plant. 
There's a Jigglypuff, first edition jungle. Eevee, first edition jungle. Execute, first edition jungle. Very, very cool cards. So, jungle, I think, was the... It was in the first edition. I think it was the second or third release. Um... Then I got, he sent all these cards from the Pokemon first movie, which was super awesome. I mean, all been sleeved and top loaded. I believe there's five in the set. Does it show how many are in the set? I believe there's five and there's, he's given me four of them, which is awesome. So I'll have to go and check how many are actually in the set, but we'll find out. Anyways, thank you so much, Super. These are awesome. These he just gifted to me. So, um, really, really kind of him. Didn't have to do that at all. But Super, you are the man. I know you ain't no troll, bro. <laughs> uh, these came from Funkin' Breaks. Um, I was able to get these uh, in a break that we had uh, bought into a while back and he was finally able to break it. So let's see what we got because I don't remember it all. Stroman, Guriel Jr., Rias, Hunter Renfro, Fran Mil Reyes, Jacob Nix, Eric Hosmer. Now, all nice top chromes, Tops Chrome uh, cards here. I like these a lot. I've always liked Topps Chrome. Just sharp looking cards. Sorry I haven't been live the last few days. been playing a little catch up with my other job. I uh, was able to finally get caught up for the most part. And am now able to have some free time to do some cards. So I'm actually doing some live streams from the road this week. Um, tomorrow I will be live streaming from the barber shop. Uh, getting my hair cut, opening cards in the shop. Ooh, a Tuki Toussaint. Very nice. I'll put that aside because I'm collecting his rookies. Nick Marcakis, Freddie Freeman. So anyways, I'll be at the barber shop. That'll be kind of fun. I'm curious about this. What are the... Are there short prints in here? Maybe not. Dansby Swanson, then we have Jake Lamb, Peralta, Avila, Walker, Tijuana Walker, Starlin Castro, kind of thought that was going to be a green border for a second. Cause I'm doing good, man. I just got your uh, your giveaway package packaged up. It's going to be sent out today. So you should receive it this week, by the end of the week. Salvador Perez. Billy Hamilton. How are you doing, my friend? And I'm going to pull the Rockies out because I was going to my PC. It's good to have you in here, Cause. It's always nice having you in, man. So Joey Votto, Scooter Gannett, Eugenio Suarez, Jesse Winker, Mikel Franco. Reese Hoskins. There you have an Aaron Nola. That's kind of neat. Set that one aside. Chance Adams. Jonathan Loisiga. 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 Hmm. Uh, Miguel Andujar. Like I need more cards. You do need more cards. Yeah, the giveaway from uh, Mega Baseball Mixer number three. Uh, you are a runner-up, so I'm sending you something. Yeah, you need more cards? This one's Pokemon, so if you're not into Pokemon, at least uh, now you've got one card. And then I got a negative refractor of Kevin Newman. That was a pretty cool card. My first negative refractor, actually. Uh, Scooter Gannett. Is it Gannett or Jeanette? There's the Dansby Swanson. Ooh, Nice. Got a little Tatis Jr. action. That'll go in my rookie pile. Kobe Allard. That'll also go in the rookie pile. There's a Kobe Allard 84 tops design. There's an Acuna Jr. at the Gold Cup. 
Always a good guy. Hank Aaron and Mike Trout. What a nice card. Ooh, I like that a lot. What a duo right there. I didn't remember pulling that one. Cool, there's an Acuna. Uh, Luis Urias. Another Acuna, the 84 tops design. Then here's the auto that we pulled. There's an Aaron Judge 84. And then pulled a Kevin Newman auto. Kevin Newman rookie card auto. On card. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Not a lot of value to it at all, but uh, it's still pretty cool. It's an auto. Take that any day of the week. So that was a pretty decent break, I thought. It's a break I had waited for for a while and we were able to finally get into. And, uh, man, finally get it filled up. And it was worth the wait. This is the card. Casey, what's up, man? How you doing? It's good to see you. Uh, one of my buddies from college just stopped in, so that's hilarious. Uh, I can't remember who sent me this one. I still don't know, but it's the Keston Hero rookie card from the Holiday Collection. Yeah, Casey and I, uh, yeah, we went to college together almost the entire time I was there, I think. Which is wild. So, anyways, like I said, I don't know. Was it you, Urban, that sent me this? Thank you so much. Was this just gifting it to me? Because this is awesome. Keston Hero, if you guys don't know, this is a rookie card that's going up in value. Definitely a guy you want to hold on to. It probably is your tape. Definitely Urban loves the uh, painter's tape. Um... And, and rightfully so. It's good tape for this. But anyways, pick up this card and hold on to it. Good value. Good value. Yeah, it didn't look like it was in a break. Uh, then I got some cards from, in fact, I think it was just loose. This box was in there and this Keston Hero was like on top like that. That's how I noticed. Um, so anyways, I got into one of, uh, jabs breaks and I picked up some garbage pail, uh, garbage pail kids cards. I remember when I was younger, all my friends had these and I couldn't have them because my mom was like, are you kidding me? Garbage pail kids. I burned my Pokemon cards because of her. So, uh, definitely not getting garbage pail kids. So I'm just going to go through these quick, but they're kind of funny. Wilton Moulton. LP record. I see, Urban. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Either way, it's an awesome card to have. So, um, I think I might have that here, but I I don't know if I have it in Holiday. So, glowing amber. I can feel the gum was on the back of this one. Yuck. Donna Donor. Ultra Sport. Squozy Rosie. Squoze Rose. Adventist throw away bad thing stories. Well, yeah, man. She convinced me that they were pretty evil. And I had like $5,000 in Pokemon cards in today's dollars. Um, nice. Exploring Norman. <laughs> Fingers all the way through the top. So anyways, I felt bad that I had these cards because she thought they were like little monsters and the Japanese were trying to control my mind. So I went into her backyard and I burned them all. It's not her fault, you know, at all. I'm not trying to blame her. I mean, she was doing what was best, and they were little monster devils from Japan that were probably trying to control our minds. So she was absolutely right. However, as an adult, I can see through the charade and find the dollar value. I know, they're weird, huh? Garbage pail kids. Yule Tide. Just a second, I'm going to let the dog out of this office because he's driving me nuts. That's exactly right, man. You burn them, the, the value goes up. 
And a lot of people did that. I mean, Jabs told that story. I thought he stole it from me, but... Uh, Anyways, apparently he did the same thing with his Garbage Pail Kids and his Pokemon. And then another kid in my church did the same thing. So, a little wild, but I've never had these, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in a binder and have uh, some Garbage Pail Kids. Probably the main reason that I bought these, or bought into this break, was because of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. If you've never watched that, uh, Charlie, like, loves to... Uh, well, he has this big collection, and he tries to use it to bribe people. It's hilarious. And people are always trying to get their hands on his collection. I couldn't figure out why or what was so interesting about these cards, but they're funny. They're funny. I love It's Always Sunny, too, man. Great show. What's up, LA Collections? How you doing, man? Good to see you, my friend. All right, let's go through what else was in here. I don't know why I have five. Oh, I know. This is another jabs break that I got into, so I got some tops. Five star. So we've got some Manny Machado cards. Wah, wah. There we go. I'll take a Tony Gwynn any day. It's a class one. Uh, Urias. Go my rookie pile. And we got some nice Tatises here, even a Class 1 Black. That's nice. So we have a Class 3, Class 1, and a Class 1 Black, which is sweet. Did I ship out the cards from last break? Yes, I did, LA. I shipped them out yesterday. So should get them by the end of this week. Uh, here's another Luis Arias for uh, its serial, 31 out of 50. Red Class 2. That's very nice. I like that. I've always liked the look of these uh, gold um, gold label, but I the reason why I bought in is because I was hoping to get one of the gold borders, which I really like. Another Fernando Tatis. Another Tony Gwynn going my Hall of Famers. And another Tatis. My goodness. Oh, no, that's a Machado. Why am I thinking that's Tatis? Um, and Urias. But I bought in, you could pick your team, so I bought the Seattle Mariners because I hope to pull Ken Griffey Gold Label Auto, which would have been sweet. All right, see you, Casey. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, LA, I cleared that with him before I sent him out. So I emailed him to see what was up, and he told me that uh, you guys couldn't come to a deal. So I just went ahead and sent it to you. So, I did get a Ken Griffey in here, Class 1, Kikuchi, Ichiro, we have Ken Griffey again, that's another Class 1, but this one's black, very nice, um, a, uh, another a Kikuchi, but this is the black Class 1, and another Ken Griffey, but this is Class 2, very nice, got a Class 2. So, I like all of those. I, the black label makes it kind of neat with their classes. I like that, the way that they do that. Yeah, I was, I was making sure before I sent that out. I didn't want to send it either. But he was, he was like, man, I really want that card. I was like, dude, there'll, there'll be plenty of opportunity. In fact, somebody, cause, you should see if... Uh, if uh, Isaac wants to buy that for me, because Kaz just pulled that exact same card. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kaz has that same card. All right, so these are all just going to be rocky, so I'll just blast through them. Because I have all of these cards, and then some. He did not make an offer. I got you. Some people are like that, you know, they don't like negotiations. I get that. They just want to have somebody else make the offer, and that's actually the first rule. There's a gold Oberg I may not have. What's going on, John? Good to see you, my friend. Just going through uh, one of my breaks from Jabs, actually. So, got into the Rockies. Oh, nice. Got a little 84 action there. But anyways, the, you know, I, I try to 
you know, broker deals if I can, but I, you know, I kind of want you guys to, to do that. So I appreciate you guys coming to some kind of an accord, um, and letting me know so I could mail them out. All right. So those were the Rockies in that pack. And let's see, I have one more box from urban to go through of the mail day after this pack. So Arenado, nice. All right, Brendan Rogers gold. Very nice. I do believe I have this in gold. However, it is a cool card. Brendan Rogers has some great potential. He got he came up this year and got sent back down. But at least they played the game fairly. Hmm. So yeah, I want to talk a little bit about this Astros situation. Another Brendan Rogers. Nice. I'm getting pretty much every variation I can of this guy. I'm pretty sure I don't have this one. Thank you. Thank you, Jabs. Um, yeah, the Astros got caught stealing signs, right? They had a camera that's uh, fed into the dugout, and then they would bang on a trash can whenever it was a breaking ball so people would know. Uh, the hitter would know. Just an accusation at this point, but it seems uh, pretty credible. I saw a breakdown from what's his face. Who was that guy? John Boy. You guys follow John Boy on Twitter? He does uh, some pretty good breakdowns and analysis. I like him a lot. Anyways, he did a breakdown of that. It was pretty entertaining, but pretty much inconclusive or uh, conclusive evidence that. They were definitely cheating. I can't believe they pulled that either. And today, in in this, I mean, it was 2017, but uh, there's a bunch of people getting on and apologizing to you, Darvish, now, which they should, because you know they were blaming him for that loss. But now we're seeing that there's more truth to it than that. It's more, not more truth. There's uh, more to the story than that. Yeah, that was a fun break the other night, John. I like that a lot. It was uh, that was neat, uh, neat and nostalgic to see all those Bowman cards. When I was younger, you know, I my parents would buy me cards, but it was like a shot in the dark, really, because they didn't know what they were buying. Um, they were trying their best, but they honestly had no clue. So. Yeah, it was from the 2017 series um well it's not confirmed by the mlb or any i mean like obviously there's plenty of evidence right now that is you know pretty damning but uh i think the mlb is probably gonna have to chime in here soon so we'll see day man oh fighter of the night man oh champion of the sun Oh, you're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. Dayman. I would say, Dayman, my favorite Pokemon is uh, probably Raichu uh, or Charizard or any one of the evolutions of Charizard. These are all from Urban Card Breaks, and I'm trying to go through them relatively uh, quickly, but I keep getting distracted by them because look at this. Charlie's beard's just just a little baby beard. That's just a little baby beard, buddy. Gotta do some work. Ah, uh, yeah, Kevin Kiermeyer from the Rays. Interesting. Not a huge Rays collector, but I appreciate that. Uh, Charlie Blackman again. Now that's where his beard really came in. There we go. Now it's really taking shape. Yeah, it is an awesome set, man. That's a lot of fun. Ah, uh, let's see. What do we got here? Oh, nice. A Tom Glavin. Look at that. I just threw uh, one of these exact cards into my Hall of Fame binder yesterday. What's up, Joey? How you doing, man? I just sent your package out today, actually, uh, from the Ty Cobb card. So, that's awesome. Ooh, a Kirk Gibson. Nice. Very sweet. I'm going to have, a, like, some nice guys to add to my Hall of Fame collection here. Andrew Dawson and a little Reggie Jackson action. 
Not a Hall of Famer. Got a question. Is a 2019 Onyx Hobby Box worth picking up? $40, four total cards, two autos. I don't know, two autos is pretty decent, but what are the autos generally? What are the auto hits? Do you know what the odds are? Are you getting uh, prospects or what? Thank you, Urban. That was an awesome first pack. Let's just cruise through this. I don't know if these were breaks I bought into, stuff that he's just hooking me up with. Another Keston Hero. See, this must have been from a break. Yeah, so the there must have been a break inside because I know we did a 2018-2019 holiday break. Victor Robles, very nice. Lorenzo Cain. Jesse Burnett, welcome. It's good to see you, my friend. I need to get on PayPal so I can get involved with you guys. Hey, man, if you go to my website, you don't need PayPal. All you need is a credit card. Yeah, it was a break. Uh, but those other ones weren't. Thank you, man. Those were those were nice cards. Well, Christian Yelich, Nottingham. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I went to Walmart. They had three more holiday boxes, so I bought them, the 2019 holiday. And then they had a ton of Hidden Fates tins, like tons of them. So I bought a couple of Hidden Fates tins because I was like, all right, let's see if I can pull out another uh, another Charizard. Um, I was watching, uh, who was I watching the other day? That big, big Pokemon guy that was a lawyer. Um Leon Hart prospects mostly. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a gamble, man. Uh, but a two auto guarantee is better. You know, you can get a forty dollar box for a one auto guarantee at Walmart um, for Bowman Platinum, I think. And there's a couple others, but uh, two auto guarantees is yeah for forty bucks. That's probably not a bad try. But we'll see. Jamie Berea. Stemmers, how's it going, man? It's good to see you. Mr. 3000, Novus Andrus, Nick Gardwine. Is that how you say that? Gardwine? All these rookies, man. They have tough names, especially because a lot of them are, uh, are uh, uh, Latino, and I, it's hard for me to figure out how to pronounce them. And a lot more Asian players, too. Bria. Although... My family is Hispanic, so it's much easier. Ooh, nice little Mike Trout there. I wish it was the short print, which I did pull the other day, which is sweet. Holy cow, we got uh, the chats flying by. I can't even keep up. Eloy Jimenez, top five prospects. Yeah, the Eloy. Eloy is in there. In there is good. I uh, I have a nice Eloy lot. Ooh, nice. There's a metallic Pujols. Very nice. Hold those away from the Rockies. Oh, thank you, Elkanon from Savannah. I appreciate that, Savannah. It was very nice of you. Am I doing a mixer this week? I am, but I don't know what is going to be in the mixer yet because I have to go up to Albuquerque on Friday or down to Albuquerque on Friday. I guess I should probably keep these in here so you can see. I have to go down to Albuquerque on Friday and pick up some stuff and then come back here for the Friday evening show. Might go a little bit later than we had in the past. So uh, I might start it later than I, I did in the past. But, yeah, I plan on uh, on doing a mixer this Friday. I just need to go and get some more product. I do know that the, uh, the hit product in it, besides the hobby boxes, the hit product will be the tops. Um, Triple Threads hobby box that I picked up. So this will be the hit box inside of it. This comes with two mini boxes and seven cards per mini box. And there's one autograph and one relic card per mini box. So there's four hits in this box. So anyways, this will be the hit box. And then I'll probably get uh, some hobby boxes of something that you guys are interested in. So what do you want to see as far as hobby boxes go? Usually I put two to three hobby boxes plus a hit box. So, Fitzy, what's going on, my friend? Good to see you. Welcome. Let's see. Did he just say hashtag Broncos choked? I don't know what you're supposed to mean by that or if it's supposed to be some veiled criticism against the shirt that I'm wearing, Stemmers. But... You're absolutely right. They did choke. 
if we're talking about the season as a whole. Ooh, there's a Matt Holiday and a Jeff Winchester, but the... That's wild. Look at that Matt Holiday. That is awesome. I do not have this card. That's amazing. Came back and almost took us to a, or uh, took us to a World Series championship. However, we got swept by the Boston Red Sox, which was total BS. And then we got some 91, 91, and some 89. Very sweet. Awesome packs right there. And then uh, we got some more in here. Let's go through these real quick. Some more Tops Holiday, I'm assuming. But look, we do have some Heritage in here. The Twins, Nick, Nick Eskask. Uh, what? Urban, what are these from? Because I don't remember doing a break into these. Robin Yount. Mark Knudsen. Will Clark. Nick es Esaski. Roper. At a, wow, look at that. Everett Ortiz and Ginter. All prospects. Kind of a neat looking card though. Kyle Gibson, Kerry Woodson, Greg Swindell, Angels Ryan Braun. Very nice. Very nice. Look at that. That's a sweet card. Hmm. Sweet. Like the little early Ryan Braun action. This may be my first fire card that I've ever gotten. Yeah, first fire. Dale Murphy, very cool. I like that one too. Dang, Urban, you hooked a brother up. These are awesome. I haven't ever had these pro cards either. I never got the pro cards. Is it numbered on the back? You mean the brawn? There's no way. Yeah, I don't see any number. I don't think you're talking about the brawn though. You were talking about something else. The gold border. This one. This is not gold, obviously. That's not what you're talking about. You mean these? Pro cards? These are orange borders. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I think that's might have, might have been what you saw. Diamond Kings, Hughes, it's a Kurt Gibson, Detroit. Interesting, I like it. Ooh, a Donnie baseball. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the Braun wasn't numbered either, no, and it wasn't gold border. Brandon Nimmo, tops chrome. Stan Musial. That's pretty cool. I like these turn back the clock cards. Give you an insight into some baseball history if you don't know. Jacoby Ellsbury, draft pick. That's pretty cool, too. Set that one aside. See you, Cause. Thanks for stopping in, my friend. I appreciate it. Cunningham, Warren Spann, Storm Davis, Garcia, Ricky Henderson. Nice. Eddie Murray, very nice. Tom Stoddard, Strasburg. Joel Youngblood, Oral Hershiser, very cool. Blue bordered. I don't know if that's normal for this set. It is not. Syndergaard, Flores. All right, one last pack. And we can actually start breaking into some stuff that isn't mail day. I do love the mail day, man. It's just so cool. Like, you guys are just so awesome. Reggie Jackson for the Yankees. Very nice. Love me some Reggie Jackson. Lexi Ramirez. Now that I've got my uh, binder full of my Hall of Famers, I'm now working on my stars that... 
probably would have been or should have been Hall of Famers. Hunter Renfro. Miguel Sano. There's a Nolan Ryan. Very cool. Do have a pretty decent Nolan collection. Nothing like Primant, my goodness. Primant's collection is ridiculous. Sergio Romo. He always seems so scrawny, but can pitch like you wouldn't believe. Look at that. What? That's a real auto. I think. Yeah, it is. Aubrey Huff, third base. That's why. That's kind of a cool looking card. Hmm. Interesting. Opeachy, what's going on, man? Welcome. Good to see you. That's pretty sweet. Uh, auto Urban, thank you. I mean, the guy I've not heard of much. Porcello. Taylor, rookie roundup. Yastrzemski, very nice. Pull the Yastrzemski out as well. Maya, Ken Strom. Severino, another Gibson, Palmer, Bush, Hudson, it's Neil Walker. I don't know why I'm going and saying the names. You guys can read. Pedro Martinez, very nice. Pull that one out too. A Clemente, I'm gonna pull that guy out too. Pull my Clemente collection. Pedro Guerrero, Chris Davis, and Chris Sale. Sweet, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm unsure as to what those cards were from, as far as a breaker. So I'm gonna have to go back and go through all of these, organize them, put them in the binders the way that they need to go, and put them in the right spots. I'll do that later, obviously. Today, let's break into something do have some stuff to break into. No worries, Urban. Don't, don't worry about it, man. Just asking questions out of the blue. Oh, it was from Patreon. Oh, sweet. That was my Patreon pack. Awesome. Well, hey, if you guys don't know what Urban's Patreons look like, well, now you do. That, that was his uh, Patreon that I bought into for the month, so uh, pretty good uh, little Patreon preview right there. Oh, come on. I got several options today, but uh, I actually don't want to open that. Okay, so what I got for us today is this last little uh, pack from Walgreens, uh, the Fairfield pack that I wanted to open up. I always like opening up a little Fairfield. It's pretty... You know, five bucks. Get some pretty uh, decent cards and at least 100 cards in there. It's kind of nice. Uh, I've got a few of these. Charizard Hidden Fates tins that I bought today. So that would be eight packs of cards. We might be able to pull ourselves another Char Char. Man, if we could get another Charizard out of there. Woo! I'd freak. Got the Charizard in getting graded right now. So hopefully it comes back as a 10. Obviously, that's the hope of any grading, but that would be Legitsky for that card. The other card that I need to get sent in, which I haven't yet, is the Fernando Tatis Jr. Auto, number to five. So I got to get that sent in and graded. It'll look nice. Chat Town! Welcome, man. It's good to see you. It's good to have you, man. 
So uh, then I got this Tag Team All-Stars box. I've opened one of these, so I kind of want to save this one. That's why I think I'm just going to open the Hidden Fates. Um, and then I did get a couple of these uh, football panini boxes from Walmart. There's one guaranteed autograph in this and one uh, mega box exclusive in this. It says Rookie Autographs Prism Neon Green. Let's see if I actually get a rookie auto or not. So, yeah, one autograph on average per box. They were $40 a box. That's not awesome. A little expensive, but I want. I, it is football season, and I uh, need to get into a little bit more. There's not much to talk about in baseball right now except the Astros and their little mishap here. We'll see uh, what the MLB decides to do about this because it's a uh, little surprising. Little surprising. So, uh, what do we do first? Baseball, football, or Pokemon? Hey, Elkamom. Elkamom has graced us with her presence. Yeah, so apparently in 2017, uh, one of the pitchers from the Astros just came out and told uh, about their 2017 World Series run. Uh, and during that World Series run, uh, there's some speculation over whether they stole signs during the actual playoffs or not. It's Some people said they stopped before. But there's some evidence that's not true. So they were stealing signs via video camera, which you cannot use technology uh, to st steal signs or information. Now, you can. I mean, the baseball has no problem with you stealing signs if you're just doing it, like eyeballing it from second base, because they can't control that, really. Uh, but what would happen is there was a video camera that was faced at the catcher, and that video feed was fed right into the dugout, not actually in the dugout, it was actually in the hallway of the dugout one of the players would be in watching the video feed and he would bang on a trash can if it was a breaking ball and that way the the hitter could hear it while he was out on the mound or while he was out at the plate and so he could hear the banging on the trash can and know okay this is a breaking ball coming and so it was yeah it was a pretty good ruse they had going but it is very evident right now that it was true um if you go and watch, go go check out John Boy. John Boy does a really good breakdown of it, and it's pretty wild because it's, yeah, they were definitely doing it. Um, so one of their pitchers has come out right now and told, uh, basically, this is what's what's happened with our, you know, with the organization. He's not with them anymore. And so I don't know what the MLB is going to do from here. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. But, yeah, they definitely stole signs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And used technology to do it. So if you recall, you Darvish had two really bad starts. And Darvish isn't, you know, he's not a, no chump on the mound. Guy is a slinger. Tall, long arms. Um, his release point makes it look like the ball's so much closer than it really is. And then it's coming way faster than it should. So it's just wild. The guy's a, a very good breaking ball. Nice slider that just falls off the table. And... Two terrible, terrible starts, right? Well, everybody blamed you, Darvish, for that, but turns out that both of those games, they think signs, they're pretty sure signs were being stolen, and he was getting lit up because of it, and it wasn't really anything to do with his pitching. Um, however, stealing signs only goes so far, in my opinion. You still have to have that natural ability and talent, of course, but when you're at that level, knowing what's coming really makes a difference. Really makes a difference. Right, he lost the series for the Dodgers, but he didn't. You know, he's with the Cubs now, and he's going, look, I, you know, it wasn't my fault. And I, I kind of am with him on it, you know. So there's a lot of people on Twitter that have been apologizing to you, Darvish, from the Dodger community over the last 24 hours since this came out. So this is this is going to be interesting to see what happens. I, I'm interesting to see how the MLB is going to resolve this one because it was so high profile on a team that won the World Series. Mm, interesting. So let's open something. Sorry, I'm rattling on about baseball cheating. I want to open this one and see what's going. It is wild. Yeah, go look it up. See, uh, I just want to see what the... I, they've been a little silent on it. However, it's only been, like I said, 24 or 48 hours, maybe. 
So we'll see. This is unparalleled from Panini 2019. One autograph guaranteed in here. So we'll see what we get. Highly doubtful we'll get anything good because uh, I've opened a few of these unparalleled before and the autos were subpar to say the least. You know, there's cheating happens in all kinds of sports. Um, obviously, in football, we've seen what's happened with the Patriots and Tom Brady over the last several years. Um, <clears throat> you know, they've been caught in several different cheating scandals. And when you're at that level, everybody's looking for the most competitive edge possible. But it just seems like in an organization that's supposed to be so professional and above board, it happens way more often than it should. Not just in uh, the NFL, but in the MLB as well. And uh, the MLB is starting, they're going to have to start addressing these things as technology becomes more prevalent and the fans uh, seem to be more involved. Stealing signs is a part of baseball. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. I just am not okay with them doing it the way that they did. You know, if we're going to set up rules and restrictions, then you guys got to abide by the rules just like everybody else. Uh, Mike Bradley, how's it going, Paige? Welcome. It's good to see you. Paige, I did read your response, or your uh, Twitter message, and I was writing a response but did not finish it. So um, I think I got a phone call and then didn't even go back to it. I will go back to it again, I promise you. But I did read it, and uh, I appreciate the message. Pioneers, Lynn Dickey, Jake Strandberger, Sternberger, rookie card. Excuses, yes, yes. Excuses, excuses. Everybody's got one and they all stink. Devontae Freeman, Adam Thielen, and Caleb Beninok. I think that last pack may have been like the... Or do they all look like this for 2019? Kind of tough to open. Come on, you old punk. Where's my urban scissors when I need them? Urban loves those scissors, man. That's for sure. Mike Gesicki, Carl Joseph, AJ Green, Melvin Gordon. That's a nice one. Unparalleled. Andy Isabella. That's a rookie. Tariq Cohen, Larry Fitzgerald. This guy's got to be in the, the very last year or two of his career. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the last year at all. Probably should be. Five-hour chat. Wow. I don't know. That that seems like a pretty long live show. Uh, Jarvis Landry. We got Kroom. Nick Foles. Tony Pollard. That's kind of neat. I'll pull that one out too. Dylan Mitchell. Curtis Riley. Aquara. And Niesman. Man, so far, nothing really... Really, no, no, no even really big names. A little unfortunate. Derek Carr, there we go. I like him. I wish it was a rookie card. Andy Dalton. I think he just got benched, didn't he? Keenan Allen. That guy is a consummate performer. Bob Greasy, look at that. Old Bob Greasy. His son used to play for the Rock or for the Broncos, Bubby Brister. Unparalleled Ryan Finley. William Golston. Ezekiel Elliott. There's a runner. That guy, he can punch through anything. He is one of the best runners in the game right now. Tyler Lockett, he is pretty good too. Gabe Kapler to the Giants. You like that move? I think I like it. Not sure. I really have no opinion on it. Isaac Rochelle. Andrew Luck. J. 
Jeff Wilson Jr. rookie card, but it looks like it's gold or something. Maybe it's a variant. Uh, Armstead. Blake Jarwin. Jared Goff. And Chad Beeb. I don't know. It's almost like when you have every card that's shiny like that, it kind of ruins it a little bit, right? You know, it's almost like you kind of want the base cards to be a little bland so these cards stand out a little bit more. How are the Pokemon prices holding up? Chat Town, I mean, just the same as it's been typical uh, for what most uh, sets do. They come out strong and then they'll slowly fade off, but uh, they've stabilized now and I think they'll probably be fairly stable for... Uh, for, uh, you're, you're going to see a slow decline over the next three years. And when I say slow, I mean, you know, it's it's going to be slow. So the prices will remain relatively uh, static for the next uh, next three years on Hidden Fates at least. And then you're going to see another sharp decline. So, But they, they prob they've basically stabilized by now because Hidden Fates, the product is plentiful. Um, you can find it quite easily now. And you couldn't before, so... Bye, Paige. See ya. Have a good one. I will make sure to get to that Twitter, I promise. James Kowser. Another Derek Carr. But that one's different. That's a little parallel. Parallel and unparalleled. Nice. Uh, Quinnen Williams. Don't know him. Cam Newton. This guy has basically whined himself out of a job. Anthony Miller and Terrell Suggs. Terrell Suggs, man. He's got Defensive Player of the Year one year, I believe. Oh, <laughs> L.A. is leaving. I thought he was saying, sorry, L.A., see ya. Sorry, Paige. Mike Williams, Miles Garrett, there's a Sam Darnold, and here's going to be our auto. Byron Murphy for the Arizona Cardinals. Never heard of him. Why did it have to be a Cardinal? I, did we pull one Bronco card this entire box? I don't think we pulled one Bronco. That was like the whole point. I want to add to my Bronco collection. That's a little disappointing. Now I've had, I've had baseball um, like Fairfield packs that I've opened that have been like all Rockies, not all, but you know a, a heavy majority. And I thought, well, uh, that's interesting. It's sold here in Colorado. I wonder if they do that intentionally, try and send cards from that region. Do you guys have any uh, insight into that? I have no clue, but it felt that way, and I've felt that way on quite a few Fairfield packs that I've opened. All right, there we go. We got uh, Charizard. This one looks like it's in decent shape. Not anymore. Uh, looks like it's in decent shape and actually centered pretty well. I've sent three of these in to get graded. But I don't see a 10 on this one just because I think that the the uh, centering is pretty bad left to right. I mean, sorry, right to left. It's a thick border on the right, so not going to be a 10 there. Warning, turn your music off. Why is that, Paige? What's that warning for? Do you think I'm going to get a copyright strike? Which is possible. I've had a few of them in the past. However, I have found some pretty good no copyright playlists that I can use that have not caused copyright strikes in the last month. So, I've been copyright strike free. Which is legit. All right, Hidden Fates. Here's a code card if you want one. I like how you can go back and fix the copyright strikes. That's kind of nice. Replace the song. Doesn't work all the time, but it's pretty good. Here's a Metapod. Sabrina's suggestion. Now remember, we're looking for Charizard, Ultra Shiny Charizard. If we find that, I'm gonna lose my mind again. Which I actually like losing my mind online because there, sweet, check that out. 
Sizer Ultra Shiny. I'll take that and a Starmie GX. But I do not have the Sizer yet. Wow. It's not very good top to bottom. It's a little thick on the top. But I do not have that card yet. It needs to go in the collection. So we'll set it aside. Put a sleeve on her. If I can find a sleeve. What? Struggling with going back to work, kind of over it today. I hear you on that. Work. When, uh, what do you do, by the way? If you don't mind me asking, chat. If you do, that's all right. Don't have to answer. Work can generally be just the worst. Uh, if you really are not passionate about what you're doing and enjoying it. That's actually why I got into this. I hated my job and I wanted to figure out a way to enjoy my life. So I thought, oh, let's get into my old hobbies. It's actually my nieces and nephews that got me into Pokemon. I wanted to play with them, the game, but then uh, once I bought cards, they all quit playing. So that was a lot of fun. Well, it lasted. Coughing, Paris, and White Bull. Very nice. Such a shiny. That I don't believe I have either. So we already have two right out this tin. Seems like the uh, hits are a little better than they were in the last release of tins. This last release was brutal. I mean, brutal. Do you guys all have a good Veterans Day? I was uh, taking the day off from streaming. Went to a little parade they have in my town. A little uh, Veterans Day parade. Got some coffee, hung out with the, the folks. It was fun. It's a good day. Got to take one day off and just kind of chill. Scyther. Jinx. Slowpoke. Coughing. Voltorb. Cubone. And Vaporeon. Well, that's a reverse hollow Vaporeon, which I'm not quite sure I have either. So I'll put that there. I think I do, but I'm not positive. I worked at the hospital forever, and I got I got over 12-hour shifts and three to four days a week. Made me a wreck going to work because I'd have to be there at 2.30 a.m. to get everyone's orders in and lab work. Yeah, that, you know, there's the advantages and disadvantages of those long shifts. Um, the advantage is you can reduce the amount of days you have to work. You know, you can get down to three days a week. Um, in many good cases, which is nice. However, the time you are there is exhausting, so it makes it very tough. Energy Graveler, Farfetched, Misty's Carillion City Gym, Voltorb, Geodude, Eevee, Clefairy, there's a Hollow Energy, and Electrode. Did I go through these ones already? Yeah. So those are four packs, and the, out of those four packs, I thought we did pretty good, honestly. Sizer, Poiple, Vaporeon Reverse Hollow, and an Energy, Hollow Energy. The amount of organization I had to do on all these breaks. So we did that minor league break and the heritage minor league cards don't give you what affiliate they are and a lot of teams have like more than three or four affiliates and so i had to like google every single one because looking through the list of mlb teams was harder than just typing it in so or the list of minor league teams Five-day stretch for work, huh?
I mean, that's pretty normal, but I don't know what you do, so. Could be five days of brutal work. All right, so let's check our pack first. A 1990 Fleer. Super. Here's a Ken Griffey Jr. First card in the box for the Reds. Set that over there. Here we go. Candelaria. Danny Nagel. They really wanted to load me up with John Candelaria's, huh? Mike Flanagan. Nice. Chris Sabo. I know a few people in this chat that uh, are not a huge fan. Or, they are huge fans. Dave Schmidt. Depends on how you look at it. There's a nice way box. Pull that out. Update checklist, Nelson, Rumi's, I don't know why every single card is upside down. But they do this all the time. They just don't ever collate these well. Gary Matthews, Julio Franco. There's a little Chipper Jones. Nice. Set that one aside. And a Fuentes. Finally, my first Rocky out of this box. We have 91 upper deck. You know what I want to see, but you're never going to out of this box, that's for sure. Patrick Lemon. Have a good one, Urban. See you, man. Thanks for stopping by, and thank you for the package. Very nice of you. Blankenship, Salazar, Saberhagen, Sheets, Mosby, Hunley. So far, nobody impressive, that's for sure. Which is okay. I don't really expect to get them out of these $5 boxes, but every once in a while you will. I got an auto last time of a prospect that did not actually make it into the majors. Here's Ken Griffey. Senior, I believe, right? Gordon, Lewis, Pedro Guerrero, Medina, there's a Tom Glavin, nice, another one, cool, well, I'll take that as a, the hit of the box, and then Jose Canseco, very nice, pull that out also, Rex Brothers, nice Rocky, see, they always do this, they throw a bunch of Rockies in here. I think that's by... They have to know. It's got to be a regional twin. But what do I know? Fairfield, one box down. That one was definitely not the $5 payout I was hoping for. However, got some nice, neat cards to add. I do have the Wade Boggs I can put in my collection. And the Tom Glavin definitely take those and a few Rockies cards that I'll throw in. Very happy about that. Switch to baseball you didn't even know. <laughs> oh, classic. That's awesome. My cards will sit and collect dust. I also won Pogs. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Pogs were so huge when I was young. And then I had a 
there, my town had like this coloring contest and I drew or colored this picture. Uh, it was like when the Swan Princess movie came back or came out from Disney. So I drew one of their Swan Princess or colored a Swan Princess picture and sent it in and won third place in the coloring contest. And they gave me Swan Princess Pogs, which was awesome. All right, this card actually looks like it's in much better shape than the other one was. Definitely better centering. Maybe still a little rough on top to bottom. But it looks pretty good. It's maybe a gradable card. The hot item for Pokemon? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, I want to open a Pokemon box. What should I buy? What is the hot item? Well, it depends on how much you're looking to spend. So a tin like this gives you four packs. And packs are the same odds depending or it doesn't matter what you're buying. Uh, if you're buying a hanger pack or you're buying something out of a tin or a box. So you don't get better odds if you spend more money, essentially. However, bigger boxes, they do tend to tell you that on average you get... Uh, one GX or one whatever per. So every certain amount of packs. So I would say Hidden Fates is uh, good to buy. Um, the tin is 20 bucks, And the uh, Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Box, so I'll show you real quick. So these tins are 20 bucks a piece. This is 50 bucks. This comes with 10 packs. These are also 50 bucks and they come with 10 packs a piece. I don't know if my mic picked any of that up, but uh, Hidden Fates is a good one to get. The newest one, which is Cosmic Eclipse, that's good to get. There's some decent value there right now. Um, anything Burning Shadows, they have a very high dollar Charizard in Burning Shadows, and it's a set that you can probably still find in Walmart or packs that you can still find in Walmart. Um, so if you can find an elite trainer box from that or just random packs from it, uh, I would stay away from unified minds. Not a lot of value there unless you like Mewtwo and Mew. Um, those are the only real high dollar cards. Uh, and then this newest set from Japan is pretty hot right now. So this set, if you can, you're not going to be able to pick this up at Walmart. You're going to have to order it straight from Japan, but it's the tag team all-star set. And this tag team set comes with 10 packs. And you could possibly get a God Pack out of it, which has a secret rare or better in every single card, not just every pack. The uh, entire pack has, what, 10 or 12 cards? And every single one of them is a GX or better. Pretty good. Boy, I'll tell you what, this the bottom of this looks resealed. No, I don't think so. I watched a video the other day of uh, resealed packs being opened, but not from Walmart very often. Yeah, save any of those pogs. Those probably going to go up in value, especially good condition ones. Misty's Carillion City Gym. How much money do you spend a month? Oh, my goodness. Was that for me, Paige? It seems a little personal. <laughs> Brock's training hollow. How much money do I spend? Uh, well, let's see. I, I would guess, uh, like on cards, you mean specifically? Oh, okay. I was like, overall, uh, on cards, I would say probably close to 3000 a month. That would be my guess. However, I recoup quite a bit of that by reselling. Yeah. Graveler, maybe more than that. I'm not sure. I remember my first month I spent five grand. No, I was... <laughs> uh, well, kind of, yeah. Like my full expenses. Gibble. I was like, well, what? I don't know. An average of how much do you, how much does the normal person spend every month? Obviously, I have my expense budget sheet out uh, that I use, but I want to know what the average is. 
what what's normal. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I spent a lot, but I recoup a lot of it. You know, you turn around and you resell quite a bit of it. Um, you sell individual cards, but some of them you keep. So yeah, it's definitely a basically a break even proposition because I, I, or even less. I probably am losing money putting more into it than I'm I'm getting out of it right now. So even though I'm putting, you know, three thousand in, I'm probably getting two thousand back a month, maybe more. Charmander, nice Greninja, finally. I have not pulled this card. I've wanted to. I've tried. Finally. Shaboygan. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. That's a big hit. Greninja. It's a great shape, too. Definitely going to send this off to get graded. Beautiful. Been wanting another uh, Ultra Shiny. Uh, that I do not have, and this these tins gave me two, so. I don't know what's normal expenses. I don't know either. That's why I, the question was so, like, oh, I'm, it's an interesting thought. I don't know. I mean, I rarely stick to the budget that I set out. Koga's Trap, Lieutenant Surge Strategy, Magmar. Psyduck here, Clefairy, Magikarp, Ekans, Snake spelled backwards, if you didn't notice, Voltorb, Erica's Hospitality, Arbok, that's it. 3,000 though? I mean, yeah, if you think about it, like, so I have to open, like, just today. What have we opened? 40, 80, 120. I've opened I've opened $120 worth of product just for this live stream. I got to do that four or five days a week, depending on how many times I stream. Um, and only one of those days, I'm actually recouping costs that I'm putting out. So the rest of the time, it's just opening cards for me. So, yeah, you, you spend a lot. But uh, the breaks are kind of where you make a lot of that back because I have to spend, I don't know, a thousand dollars on product and then sell the break and get 1200 maybe so i don't make much on them but i try to mark them up a little bit so that i make something i try to get the best deal that i can so um that way both of us win by the way i forgot uh i'll show you what a break is in a moment actually so funkin sent me this a 20 dollar piece where he signed it himself this is like Funkin's calling card, which is legit. Yeah, that's awesome. Very awesome. I love that card. Thank you so much. Uh, here's Hobby Searcher. He sent me his. Very, very cool. This one's 18 out of 20. I think I showed you this last time, but I wanted to show it again. Uh, so yeah, Paige, there's definitely a good way to make money doing this. So if you're going to do uh, breaks or if you're going to get into breaks, then you're going to want to do that for your PC mainly. Uh, but it is a good way also for, and when I say PC, that means personal collection. Elkanon cards are coming, promise you, promise you. Uh, it means whatever you personally collect, but... There's going to be a lot of cards that you pull. So, for instance, I pulled a few cards this week. Or not just this week, but in the last few months. This card right here, the box this came out of cost me $120. This card is autographed and numbered to 5. And I'm getting it graded. If it comes back a PSA 10, I could probably sell it for 1000 So, you make up. You make quite a bit of money um, if you have it graded in PSA 10. Pete Alonzo comes back PSA 10, probably sell for a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so this Wander Francos, these will sell for a couple hundred dollars for this numbered one, maybe a hundred dollars for this not numbered one. So how collecting works is that you're eventually going to you gotta you gotta spend money to make money. You gotta buy in and open. Uh, packs or else you're not going to get in and how uh, breaks work is I will sell a team out of this so Paige I'll say um, 
all the Broncos, you can have the Broncos out of this or the, the Dallas Cowboys or whatever team you care about. And I'll sell you just the Cowboys for five bucks. And so any Cowboys cards that I pull out of this, you'll get. And that's how a break works. Now, that's not the rules for all breaks, but it's similar to that. Um, yes, cards can be very expensive. And that's why breaks are so much nicer is that I can come in and spend my money on buying a big box. So this isn't that this only costs 40 bucks, but this box here I can spend this cost a little over two hundred dollars. So here's a two hundred dollar box of cards and you're only getting seven cards per mini box. So you only get 14 cards total in this box, but it's two hundred dollar box. So you're probably going to get something good. And uh, I throw one of these hit boxes is what I call them that have guaranteed autographs and guaranteed relics. I throw one of these into all my breaks so that people have a chance at getting uh, really high dollar cards without spending really high dollar prices. So my breaks usually sell between $10 and $20 per team, um, depending on what we have in the break that week. Last week, we, it was only 12 bucks, so it was a pretty good break for pretty cheap. So that's essentially what uh, a break is, and it's a, a good way to get uh, get in without spending a ton of money. That's how I got back into my collecting, and that's how I... Um, when I started this channel, I wanted to do more breaks than this, but I realized why, why would I want to compete with a lot of big breakers? All I'm really doing breaks for is for previews so that people can get, uh, a big variety in, of different products and see what they want to collect. You know, if this is something they're really interested in collecting and going down, this is a good way to do it is do mixer breaks. So I mix a bunch of different products together and then just sell, uh, just sell a couple of teams here and there. Um, sometimes I'll sell, you know, like half the teams and keep the other half for myself so that I have a chance at hitting something. But that's not happening nearly as much anymore because my breaks are all selling out. I used to do that when my breaks didn't sell out as much. But uh, yeah, those Wanders are my mom's. She's telling me I have to sell them for her on eBay and she's going to give me 10%. So we'll see. I could get 30 bucks if I get 300 out of those cards. But I'm sending them in for her to get graded first. So um, she's going to have to pay 40 bucks for the grading. So anyways. But uh, yeah, they're just sitting on my desk because I have to send them with this submission that has my all my other autos in it. Oh boy. I forgot I do have somebody here cleaning. I have somebody come in and clean like twice a month. Which is super nice because I'm too lazy to do it myself all the time. But, uh, hi John Arcade, welcome. Thank you Paige, I appreciate you saying I need more supporters on here. Usually the first day of the week uh, when I go and do a lunch break, it's pretty slow. I don't really get uh, as many follow or as many people watching live. Um, and this is the first day I broadcast today, or this week, so... <laughs> Paige. Well Paige, this, you know... Card collecting became a side hobby for me, uh, and it always has been for a long time, but uh, just recently, again, I I do own a few other businesses. I own a software company. I also own an assisted living management company, um, and then I own some office buildings that I rent out as well. So, uh, you know, this has given me an opportunity to be able to be a little more flexible because I made some good decisions out of college. Um, so... Yeah, I've got some decent businesses, but uh, look, I've never paid a housekeeper before, and it's only been recent, and I think the reason why I've been able to do some of the things I've been able to do is because I always live like I'm poor, and if you live like you're poor, you'll always be rich, and so, um, anyways, the lady that comes and helps, she's from my church, um, and she's uh, great at cleaning, she's great at it, so... Uh, yeah. Love having her come over, get some food if she needs, clean, take a shower if she needs. I used a branch manager for in I used to be a branch manager for in-home health and we mingled with an assisted living company. Yeah, that happens a lot of times with home health. We will try to contract with a lot of home health, although our state doesn't allow us to do that anymore cuz it's kind of a kickback. Um however, we do have certain home health agencies that focus on our facility directly or have a good working relationship with us so um yeah we don't contract with them anymore but the resident can directly and we can encourage them which company to use 
I thought about starting a home health company because uh, I wanted to figure out how to fill the assisted livings or keep them full. And that was seemed like a good way to provide marketing and a service uh, to people that didn't want to go into a facility but wanted to age in place in their home. So anyways, that's just a little bit about my businesses. Uh, and that's why this has become so interesting to me because it's taking up a lot of my time even though I have other businesses. But this one's way more fun. I mean, way more fun than anything else I've done. So uh, I'm enjoying myself and I'm hoping this takes off and becomes you know, a bigger business, an actual business at some point. I'd like to open an actual card shop, uh, get some discounts. That'd be cool, but we'll see. I'm done trying to... <laughs> Home health is a pain in the rear. Yeah, that is for sure. Um, and it doesn't pay nearly as much. You know, the Medicaid reimbursement is horrible on it. And that's why I ended up not doing it because it just financially was not a good business decision. Um, in fact, they regulate it really highly and you, can, you can't pay very much. So it's it becomes cost prohibitive for businesses like me to get involved. But there were some other uh, ideas we had. We thought about doing like homemaker services where you didn't have the oversight of regulation, but you could come in and cook meals and do laundry and like clean the house and stuff like that but you weren't actually providing health care they could come over to our assisted living if they wanted to get uh health care or help essentially um on the day that we had a doctor come in or a dentist or whatever and you know meet with them that way but no i didn't pull anything big today john uh sorry i wanted to address that earlier no but uh we we have not pulled anything big today we did get some fun stuff and some good stuff from Urban, which was really, really sweet. Um, we got all these uh, packs that I've got to open, which I'm excited about. And Urban, this was his Patreon that he sent to me. And then uh, a bunch of these cards, which actually I think came from uh, Funkin, so never mind. And then we did pull this auto. It's a rookie card of Byron Murphy. So we can only hope that he turns out to be Legitsky. I highly doubt it, though. So, anyways, all right, guys. I am going to be checking off. I, uh, I will be setting up this break. Like I said, this break will be happening Friday, this Friday. Probably between 6 and 8 Mountain Time in the evening. Uh, but we'll just see what time I get back from Albuquerque. And this will be the hits box in the break. And we are looking for some ideas on what hobby boxes or jumbo boxes you guys would be uh, interested in for this next break. Also, do you want it to be just baseball? Uh, or would you like me to throw some hobby boxes of football and maybe throw some Pokemon into a mixer break where we have baseball, football, and Pokemon? I think that would be a tougher sell, to be honest with you, because that's, you know, be kind of difficult to get... Uh, all fans of all three in but if you guys have suggestions please think about it let me know tomorrow during lunch breaks live uh what you would like to see for me to pick up uh hobby box wise so that we can crack uh crack into it and have a nice break thanks for stopping by Paige. i appreciate it and uh we'll chat with you soon opichi thank you too and yeah thank you uh john arcade appreciate you saying that uh do need to get into a little bit more football this year so tomorrow i'll be opening this prism Panini Prism football uh, in the back. So if you want to see more football, there will be some tomorrow. Check out Blowout, some good deals right now. Yeah, there are, but I need to get some stuff for Friday specifically. So I am going to get some orders in on uh, Blowout, but I need to go and buy some stuff at a hobby store. So I'm going to go to Albuquerque. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff there. If you guys see ABQ, let them know I'm looking for them. So. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be signing off. Uh, get some more packages in the mail. Appreciate everyone. Peace.